I was very surprised this morning when I woke up and found out that we are getting Dress Up Glaciella in War of the Visions Global. She was the JP fan voted unit, just like Zazan was on our side. Uh, but on JP's side, she was not time limited, and it seems like she's not time limited for us either. So when you look through the patch notes, there is no yellow text saying this will only be available for a limited time. So unless there's been a mistake in the release notes, uh, she will not be a time limited unit for us. So that's really good. Now, uh, she is a top tier magic attacker. She will be a great unit for anyone that goes for her, uh, but I'm personally going to have to skip her because I don't have the Viz to pull for her right now, and since she's not time limited, I will naturally pull her eventually and snow build her, just like I'm doing King Mond, and he's almost ready now a couple months later, so eh. Uh, but with that, today we'll do a review, what her stats are, her abilities, how to build her, and just generally where will she shine and uh, perform a little bit less. So Glaciella is a top tier mage, so yeah, new Glaciella is a mace user and she is a magic character. Uh, she has a ton of AoE attacks, some are instant cast, some are delayed, uh, she can use different ma types of attacks, she has magical and uh, strike attacks since she has a scholar sub job. She has a really good agility, but terrible mobility. She has 3 move, jump 1, the standard, and no ways to increase that, so you have to play around that a little bit. Uh, she can decrease magic resistance, so she's the only unit in the game right now outside of kill phase limit break that can decrease magic resistance for enemies so that's really rather unique and then she's really bulky versus physical she can have a ton of defense it's easy to build her with more than 50 uh, which makes her a really good fighter for uh, a lot of matchups and then she has a little bit of magical survivability with magic reflex but uh, it's RNG so she'll often die to mages in uh, my opinion and then, uh, yeah, she has a master ability that increases fire units. She is a fire unit herself. And then she has some AoE resistance, which I think is really cool. It's really easy nowadays with King Mon's TMR if you have that. And then if you've pulled for Death Machine or uh, the Holiday uh, Vision card, to have a build that gives you like 50% AoE resistance. And that's super good against all the AoE threats we have right now. So having something like that in a master ability, in my opinion, is a really good thing. Then finally, her TMR is interesting. It's a um, clothing piece of gear, which gives a good amount of HP and spirit, uh, some critical avoidance, which I don't really care too much about. And then it gives you an AoE ability that increases magic uh, for allies and magic resistance penetration for self. I could see some scenarios where it's good, you ideally want that on a mage, uh, or on a character that's going to support other mages, uh, but there's so many good TMRs in the game right now that I don't think this is necessary. So if you get it, great, uh, but honestly the catch here, the prize is really the unit. One thing I forgot to mention is she is a cost 100 unit, so just like Zazan before her, she will probably have decreased pull rates, I guess we'll see, uh, but I'm expecting the shards to be the same price as everything else since they seem to have uh, standardized those. Uh, and if we compare her stats to Black Rose Helena, uh, she is rather comparable. She has a little bit less HP at 3100, a little bit more magic at 542, which is insane. And then look at that 66 agility. She is faster than the Black Witch. Faster than just about any character in the game. Uh, at 66, it's definitely top tier levels, so that's really, really good. Uh, her luck isn't terrible either, so she should be rather accurate. And then she's got 8 defense, which I like. That is going to come in handy for her. It's a little bit more than even Luel has in her base kit, and we all know how good a physical bruiser Luel can be. Uh, so yeah, definitely a lot of potential right there. Uh, then in terms of resistances, she has a slight amount of resistance to Slash, good resistance to Missile and Magic, and since she'll be far away from the enemy team, I think it's going to be rather rare that an enemy with a Spear or a Strike attack is going to have the chance to reach her. If they do though, she's weak to those. Uh, and then uh, yeah, she's weak to Water of course, as a Fire unit. She has resistances to Confusion and Stun. While that is good, it's not as good as something like what the Black Witch has, resistant to Charm and Stop. So in a lot of manual setups where you're trying to use her for class matches, she could get completely screwed up by Charm strategies, for example. So you have to be wary of that. Uh, but overall, she has a really solid stats. Uh, just generally, super high agility with super high uh, firepower with magic is hard to beat. The way her stats move from 99 to 120, I say you could realistically stop at 115 and still get a great performance out of her. You have the 8 defense, you have 500 magic, which is what a lot of units have at 120 and you already have that at 115. Uh, you do lose out on a bit of HP at 2700, you will end up being rather squishy, uh, but that's the only trade-off. Your agility, defense and magic are all competitive even at 115. 
Then, let's begin by talking about her passives. The first one she gets, and it has an EX upgrade, is going to increase her magic attack and spirit penetration, so that will give her crazy damage on top of reducing casting times. It's just a top tier passive, uh, you would never equip anything different, this needs to be on her. Uh, it's part of why she's so good. Uh, then I would probably take Scholar's Knowledge for some extra defense and accuracy. I really like having my units, uh, even if they're attackers, giving them some tankiness so that when enemies get to hit them, they survive a lot better. Uh, you could potentially go for more decreased cast time, but she has some already in her master ability, and then she has some with one of her passives. I don't think you need to stack much more uh, for her to be good, especially since she already has some instant cast abilities that don't really care about cast time. Uh, then, in terms of counter abilities, I mean, Magic Reflex is clearly the way to go in my opinion, because she is not survivable against magic that much. She's going to be a high faith unit without any kind of spirit, only 20% magic resistance, but that's not going to make up for the extra damage you take for having a high spirit. So yeah, definitely equip the Magic Reflex on her in my opinion. And then her Limit Burst is really good. It's a long range instant cast attack that reduces counter chance. We've seen that a couple times, so it nullifies counters from the enemies for three turns. Uh, deals high damage, and then restores 10% of her AP for the following three turns. Uh, that is super powerful, and um, she starts with the standard AP of a mage, so she already has three-fourths of her AP bar full when the match begins. Uh, she drops the limit burst, she's going to keep regenerating AP for three turns. That makes her especially good for guild battles and a lot of scenarios where she'll just have that AP remaining for the second fight, and I don't realistically see her run out of AP ever. With this ability, uh, she won't need bells, which is a pro, so you can run bells on another one of your units as well. Now, I know when a main job is good, when I look at it, try to bar out the abilities that I would never use, and I just don't find any. All these abilities have at least one scenario where they will be the best possible pick, so I really like that. Uh, her first ability, standard damage and chance of berserking, that's going to be decent. I mean, if you do get the berserk, you're completely negating the ability of one of the enemy team members to do anything in the fight, and you make them squishier by increasing the damage they take. That's pretty good. Uh, she can increase magic attack in an AoE, and then increase it for her for by 50. That's crazy. A mod of 50 is more than what you gain from the Trousseau Vision card, which gives you 35. Uh, she is going to hit like a truck with that buff, and since it's a, a, a an AoE buff, she will use it in priority over anything else. So that's really, really good. Then she has an attack that increases Spirit Penetration by 50 before landing it, which means that with her passive, she has a 90 Spirit Penetration with that ability. If you equip some glasses on to increase that, you can have 100% Spirit Penetration and just blast enemies in an AoE. That's pretty damn good. Then uh, the Scratch Bite or Tear if you upgrade it to EX job is a 200% mod attack, which is less than the area explosion we've seen before. But if the enemy is affected by Sleep, Berserk, Bells, or Haste, which a lot of teams have at least one Bells user and uh, some Haste, so that's pretty reliable, uh, it becomes a 260 mod ability, and then it becomes their hardest hitting ability. It is single target though, so you have to keep that in mind, uh, but in counterpart, it has the advantage of being an insta cast, so it is going to be very very reliable. I would potentially turn off uh, the um, Passionate Tact uh, so that she uses tier in an instant cast, uh, unless you have a lot of cast time, because that could prevent the enemy from taking an extra turn and give you a better chance at killing them. So yeah, really powerful ability overall. Uh, it does also give her a great synergy with King Monk, who's going to land the Berserk on the enemy team, and then you're going to one-shot them with tear afterwards. Uh, then uh, Ao's impact is her instant cast AoE attack. It has a like line pattern in a long range, so that could be good. Uh, the main asset here is really the instant cast dimension of this ability. Otherwise, it has less damage than a lot of the other options. And then if you get her to 120, you get Blue Purge. Uh, it has the Arithmetician range, so it can hit people up to six squares away, which is really, really good. Uh, deals 220 mod damage, which is really high, and then decreases CT by 25. Uh, a decrease of 25 is nothing. Uh, I don't think that's going to matter at all. So it's really just a long range ability that you get. Uh, so while it's good, uh, she doesn't need that to compete. I think at 115, she is going to remain a really good unit. Then if we're talking about the Silverwolf sub-job, there's 
three abilities and they all have a scenario where they are worth running. Uh, the first one, Sybil Force, is an AoE sleep chance. Now, uh, Glaciala does not have any guaranteed hit moves, so with this she can potentially put enemies to sleep, which doesn't have to land in terms of accuracy, you just have to land the status effect, and then your next attack is guaranteed hit, and has extra damage because the target is asleep, and extra damage because you're probably going to use tear, which uh, is a super high mod attack on sleeping targets. So it is a one-shot kill for evasion teams if you can get the status effect off, which is really fun. Uh, then a triple bite, it's a three hit attack, it's not going to chain for magic because magic does not chain, but it is going to chain for fire, so that's pretty uh, re relevant, especially in some raids or kind of content where you are running a team of fire units, you want to build a big chain and kill the enemies faster. Uh, that's the kind of scenarios where it will be good. Uh, the one ability that really makes it crazy, though, is the Roar of the Hungry Wolf. Uh, it's an AoE attack that deals damage and decreases magic resistance. As I said, she's the first unit that has that uh, outside of Kill Phase Limit Burst. It's an AoE, she can use it three times, and if you're fighting a high magic resistance target, it is going to be the move she uses first. Uh, that's going to make uh, enable her following attacks, which is really good, but it also makes her a really good partner for mage teams because all of their following attacks are going to be stronger. Uh, so overall, really solid sub job. Then we have White Mage. Uh, I think a lot of people know White Mage, but since we've gotten a couple new players with Final Fantasy VII Remake, let's quickly go over that. White Mage gives you the ability to cure status effects, which is relevant, uh, heal, uh, decrease incoming magic or physical damage in a single target. She has Raise, which is a terrible ability that you should never use unless you... Uh, I don't know, unless you want to meet condition for a quest and you're about to win. But outside of that, Ray's not reliable, does not give you good HP. Uh, and then her uh, maxed out ability is Kiraga, so she does not have full life. Uh, in my opinion, she's such a great attacker that I don't see a lot of scenarios where her taking a turn off damaging enemies for heals is going to be that worth it. Uh, I think you'll instead want to run some other sub jobs. The one that's competitive with the Silver Wolf subjob is Scholar. Scholar gives her the ability to increase her own defense and defense debuff resistance, which makes her even tankier versus physical. That is really good. Then she has an ability that decreases enemy attack. Meh, I think she has better stuff in her main job. Same for Magic Ball, she has better stuff in her main job. Uh, the ones that are really good is the speed reading method. That gives her some extra CT and then decreases cast time for a couple turns. What I like about that is uh, you can use that to reach enemy team, especially in manual play since you're going to suffer from low uh, movement in general. This will allow you to at least gain turns faster so you can potentially close in on the enemy team with that. And then she has the uh, Law of Geo Absorption, I guess this one will be Law of Pyro Absorption, but the AoE Strike Attack that absorbs damage. Uh, this is really good because if you're not if you're running this color sub job, you don't have the ability to decrease magic resistance. But in counterpart, you have the ability to use strike attacks instead. So if the enemy is magic resistant, you can at least use this to deal decent damage to them either way. So I think this is what a standard build for her will look like. So roughly 5400 HP, 1200 magic is really good, 93 agility is definitely in the high tier. And then look at that, she has 41 defense. If she's a scholar, she can increase that to 56, which is really, really good. And then, yeah, just powerful attacks in general with uh, that crazy amount of magic. Uh, she would be a great partner for other mages like more Black Rose Helena, uh, you know, anybody that can benefit from the decreased magic resistance if you're running her in her own sub job, or just generally benefits from the same vision cards is going to be a great partner for her. Naturally, King Mont is a great tank. Uh, he can increase AoE resistance. She already has some. So I would see a really good team using King Mont, his TMR, and uh, the Death Machine vision card, where Glaciella's AoE resistance will be over 50%. So even if she gets caught by an, an enemy AoE magic attack, she is going to survive it. Uh, and then you can rush the enemy team. If King Mount ever lands the Berserk, you deal extra damage with one of your abilities. So just overall good synergy. Uh, and then a healer like Yunas, uh, or anybody that can heal her, bring her back to life. Since she is so bulky versus physical, uh, any heal will have a lot of value over a longer fight. So I think that's going to be good partners for her. Then enemies, uh, more is going to destroy Dressa Glaciella. Yes, Glaciella can ignore spirit resistance and just 
do you do a couple things to try to do decent damage, but more will kill Glaciella a lot quicker than the opposite. Uh, Titus, also a really good character against Glaciella, he's going to do crazy damage against her, and even if she has a lot of defense, Titus doesn't really care that much about that, so he is going to come in and destroy her. Uh, Aerith, same thing. Uh, Black Witch is also a really big threat, she is going to destroy Glaciella pretty well. Uh, so yeah, there are a bunch of matchups, she is not a godsend unit that will destroy everything in her path, uh, but she will be strong in many matchups still. So well, that's my verdict. Well, she has great survivability. She has great damage, long range, multiple damage types, uh, some instant cast abilities if you need them. With her limit break, she's got roughly unlimited AP. She's hard to beat, let's be honest. Uh, her drawbacks are that she has low mobility. Uh, perhaps she'll have a reduced pull rate, I guess, being cost 100 unit, but we won't know that until we see the banners. Uh, a reason you might not want to go for her is just because she's not time limited. So if you don't have plans to use her immediately, you will, down the drain, naturally pull her, naturally get the resources to eventually build her. Uh, I skipped Kingmon, I'm now slowly getting him. He's uh, on the verge of getting to 120. It's gonna take a couple months, but if you don't pull her now, you're not locking your account out of getting her ever, so that's a good thing. If I was to look at it by game mode, she seems like a top tier PvE unit. A large AoE attacks, uh, several damage types can decrease magic resistance, can chain, uh, and is survival survivable on top, could potentially be your healer if you need her to just top tier. Uh, in Arena, you can pick the right enemies for her to shine, so fight those physical teams mainly, and then just destroy them. She is a top tier unit, so that will work out. Uh, same for Guild Battle, I think, with her Limit Break, that's going to give her uh, a lot of AP back. Uh, she won't run out of AP, even if this in the second fight. And uh, she, her moves you have two to three casts only, but she has so many good moves to use that even if she runs out of one ability, she still has a lot of good things she can provide. Uh, I think where she, where she will struggle the most is manual PvP, uh, because she doesn't have great mobility. So you have to equip something like Ketone's TMR on her to try to make her more mobile, try to use those abilities that restore or CT to try to eventually get in range to hit the enemy team, uh, but it's going to be hard to engage, so you're going to have to be like a defensive player if you're running her, uh, which could be a major issue in a lot of matchups where enemies will line up like a triple turn and then kill you, uh, so be wary of manual PvP, and then outside of that, running her in auto class matches, for example, will be a bit like Arena, uh, but since she's so reliable, I think even if you end up fighting a mage team, she will perform decently, and if you're lucky enough to fight a physical team, she will destroy them, so overall she'll do well in uh, Odo as well. Uh, so as I said, my intention is unfortunately to skip her, I just don't have the viz to go for her right now, uh, after my fiasco trying to pull for Aerith, so that's gonna be my intention, but I definitely recommend that players that do have enough resources to pull her uh, go for it if they like her kit and if they plan on using her. Otherwise, as I said, not time limited, don't stress out too much. Uh, but that was it. Hopefully you found it interesting, learned a thing or two. Uh, it was a little bit long, but she's such a good unit that I feel like I had to go in depth uh, about it. So that's it. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And then as per usual, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.